Okay, welcome back. Okay, in this mini video, we are going to be looking at cellular respiration, the big picture. Okay, by now, you should have already viewed glycolysis, the bottom line, the citric acid cycle, the bottom line, and what happens at the inner mitochondrial membrane? Let's answer this question right now. Oxidative phosphorylation and the electron transport chain. Okay, there we go. I didn't add that when I made the video, but it's added now. Okay, so we've seen these three processes. Let's take a big step back and look at this process as a whole, okay? So the very first process we know is glycolysis, where we take glucose, a six carbon molecule, and we break that down into two molecules of three carbon pyruvate, okay? Now pyruvate has to be tricked out before it can go into the citric acid cycle in the matrix, right? It has to get molecularly modified. So let's just label this process first. This is glycolysis, and we produce a little ATP, about two ATP, per glycolysis reaction that, that occurs. But the most important thing is that we load these electrons onto NAD+, and reduce it into NADH, which then is gonna fly off and drop off its electrons at these proteins, these little dots that are embedded in the inner membrane of the mitochondrion, okay? So that's the more important thing. We get a little bit of ATP from glycolysis, right? So we know that next, pyruvate has to be turned into acetyl CoA before it can go into the matrix and be the substrate or the wood to the fire for the citric acid cycle. So acetyl-CoA enters the citric acid cycle and from this process we get a little bit of ATP. All right, not a whole lot. So glycolysis gives us a little ATP Citric acid cycle gives us a little bit of AT, ATP. Oops, let's make that CO2 go away. All right, what's the most important thing from the citric acid cycle? Is that we get NADH and FADH2 that can fly off and carry those electrons with it and drop them off at the proteins embedded in the inner membrane of the mitochondrion, okay? Now, citric acid cycle glycolysis, little bit of ATP. Now, we just learned what happens when NADH and FADH2 drop off their electrons at these proteins. We can, with those electrons being transported from one protein to the next, to the next, to the next, we can create a proton gradient also known as a chemiosmotic gradient. And it's like water building up behind a dam that when they flush through ATP synthase, that is going to give ATP synthase enough energy to phosphorylate, right? To add a phosphate onto ADP. That is going to give us about 36 ATP. And this process is called oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, sticking the P onto ADP. So coming back to our big picture, NADH from glycolysis, NADH and FADH2 from the citric acid cycle, drop off their electrons at these little proteins of the electron transport chain, the ETC, and what occurs there the whole process of making ATP there is referred to as oxidative phosphorylation. Remember phosphorylation? Oxidative phosphorylation is putting a phosphate onto adenosine diphosphate 
to make adenosine triphosphate. And this third process of electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation gives us a ton of ATP, about 36. So there you have it, our three processes, glycolysis, citric acid cycle, and electron transport chain with oxidative phosphorylation to give us about 38 to 40 ATPs per glucose molecule that's broken down, all right? And that is how we harness the electrons from glucose to power ATP synthesis. All right, see you next time.